Welcome to another episode of Not Your Average Lives, and today I am going to talk about the three reasons I transitioned from a network marketing business into my own online business. Now, before you watch or listen, I say watch because I'm starting to do a video podcasting based on an idea I got from a recent podcast guest. Sandy Viteri. And so she teaches how to do video podcasting. And, you know, I, I record my podcast episodes on video, but I just don't publish them in video. I just extract the audio out. And then I publish that because podcasting is kind of an audio based platform. And she encourages people to take videos and put it on YouTube. So that's what I'm doing now. And I'm excited about it because my BFF from college, she only watches stuff on YouTube. I don't think she uh, does podcasts. Um, She did listen to a recent one. I encouraged her to listen to, but so now um, I can, for those of people who are more visual and like to see things in action, you can now see my episodes on YouTube. So that's exciting. But anyway, so episode 31 is the episode where I talked about Um, why I started an online business. Um, So you should probably listen to that journey that I call it my long journey because it was a, it was a process and it took many, many years before I transitioned. I I did, I was in network marketing for four and a half years as a beach body coach before, and I loved it, but it wasn't making the money. And um, I mean, I was helping people and people were having transformations, but I'm going to get into in this episode, the three reasons I transitioned into my own business. And I think it's uh, really something that could be useful to some people out there. Maybe some network marketing people are listening to this and they're like beating their head against the wall and they're so frustrated and they're working hard and they're not uh, making progress uh, in terms of their, their, bank balance. Uh, but, and, you know, it can be a frustrating uh, business. So I wanted to share the, the three main reasons I got out of it. We're going to, we're going to dig right into that, but please uh, listen to my uh, episode 31 if you haven't. So that'll give you some more background. I'm not going to go into here. It'd be re- redundant to do that. If you've listened, I don't want to make people go through it twice. All right. So number one is I wanted to live or have a business that was based on my terms and my rules. Uh, So I realized at some point that I was kind of limited that I couldn't do some things. I got really frustrated when my coach, who was also my daughter, and she was fantastic, she was one of the top people in the company, but I would want to do something. And she would say, you need to check the policies and procedures manual. And I was like, you know, I thought those was my own business. You know, they kind of pitch to you. You can have your own business and you can make blah, blah, blah. And so I'm like, okay, so it's really not my own business. You know, there's the man, just like in a corporate job, you know, you got the, you know, check the policies and procedures manual, there are rules, employee rules, employee handbook, right? So, and I remember I had looked into having a franchise and a franchise is like a very similar thing. You, you, you will get your own business. You pay into a, an existing, you get the marketing plan, you get everything kind of handed to you. It's kind of a cookie cutter thing, but you know, you get a, like a McDonald's, you're an instant kind of millionaire because McDonald's has a huge brand and huge, but you know, you still have to follow the rules from you know, that the franchise owner has in place. So until you do your own thing and you go out and you say, I am going to create a business and it's going to be my rules and my, my terms. So it's going to be my mission statement. It's going to be my values. That's what was one of the main reasons I wanted to create something and I didn't have that confidence. So that's one thing that Beachbody gave me was the confidence to know that I can do this. And I don't know that I would have had that without starting in a network marketing business. And so that's kind of like why I call it, I refer to it often as my, my uh, business on training wheels because it taught me a lot. And some of the things it taught me is what I did not want. And so I was able to create, and it's so much fun to create a mission. You you know, when think about it. And when you're in a corporate, if you've lived a corporate 
environment or been in a corporate environment, you have a mission statement. And I talk about, I worked at America Online, AOL, uh, it was America Online when I started, but AOL, they, we had the best mission statement. And as an employee, you want to get behind, you want your employees to believe in your mission statement because they will, you know, die for it. You know, they, they will like carry that banner of that mission statement. So you want to find people that like employees that, and you want to really make sure they understand what's behind the why behind the mission statement. And so when you do your own thing, you get to create that and you get to find the people that really believe in it as well. And so, so I got tired of having to go refer to the policies and procedures manual and not be able to do, like I wanted to uh, create a course and I wanted to teach something other than health and fitness because I really started getting into personal growth and mindset stuff. And I, I had a free challenge that I was meeting people um, to potentially have them come in and do the health and fitness with me. And it was mindset based. And I got such great feedback and met a lot of people through that entry point. And I wanted to make that a course. And I couldn't. Um, uh, I had to go look at the policies and procedures and I couldn't. And I was like, that was too confining. And I thought, why am I doing this? So that was the number one. Number two is I wanted my money. I wanted a hundred percent of what I, my efforts. And it's interesting because the network marketing model is you'll make a ton of money. You'll make a million dollars. And that's a very, very like 1% of who gets into the network marketing business. A lot of the reasons are because people come to distributors because a lot of people become distributors for the discount because they, you know, usually the carrot is, well, you can get these products because you start as like kind of a consumer of products and the products, you know, you can get cheaper if you're a distributor. So they kind of like reel you in. So, you know, the 1%, you know, is usually based on everybody who's a distributor not just the people who are working the business, but very few people are able to work a network marketing business and make it a full-time job or cover the bills, so to speak. Uh, so, and I was making six figures in the corporate world. And so for me to really want to leave the corporate world, I had to see that I was going to be able to make six figures. So that was kind of my mindset. But in terms of the money, it's like, and every compensation plan is different for every network marketing company. And I'm only familiar with the one that I was in, but I was not getting much of the cut, you know, and I was working, working, working hard. And in the end, it, you know, and, and where you really make the money is you recruit other coaches and then they sell stuff and then they recruit other coaches and they sell stuff. And, you know, it's very similar to like a sales organization. If you think about somebody who's selling, uh, you know, whatever it may be, selling products, selling copiers, selling, you know, computers or whatever, our next door neighbor in one of our houses, he was a Dell salesperson. He made tons of money, but you just, you know, you, at, as you, you know, you become, you, you start as a salesperson, you get, you rank advance, um, then the salespeople that are under you, you get a cut, you know, so very similar model. So what I found was the network marketing business was really, I was a recruiter and it was a sales organization. And was that really what I wanted to do? Uh, so I just wanted to help people uh, feel better and feel like they were 20 years younger and lose weight and, you know, feel good about themselves again. And so I was like, I'm recruiting salespeople is what I'm doing. So the money was a factor because there wasn't enough of it for how hard I was working. I was killing myself. I was burning the midnight oil. And it was like, I was trying to hit these quotas and I was successful hitting these quotas for four and a half years. Let me tell you. And I won prizes every month. My husband was like, what are you buying now? And I'm like, I didn't buy anything. It's, a, it's a, I won it. And so I would win prizes. And I'm, I'm very, um, what I learned through this process is that I like a challenge. And so I am very competitive. And so I wanted, and I was always like the top, like, person and my daughter would do these like you know photos of the top 
you know, people with the points and the and on the team. And, and so it always made me feel really proud, but it wasn't coming through in terms of income. And, and I, I won some trips and those trips were fun. You know, these things kept me going because I always kept thinking, oh, it's, you know, it's going <laughs> to, go. but, uh, you know, the, their rules, their money, you know, it's like, okay, that was the second thing. So I wanted to have whatever hard work and sweat equity I put into something, I wanted to be the one who got 100%. And let me decide what to do with that. You know, you know, maybe I'll do donate some. And I, it's funny too, because since I've been on my own, never when I was a Beachbody coach, since I've been on my own, I've started donating to St. Jude's and I'm sponsoring an AIDS orphan in Africa. And so I do this. It's like every month I have money that goes to these things. And so it's my money. I get to decide what I'm do. So, and I choose. And so my mindset around money is so much different now. So number three, my why. And so this is really key because you need, for, when you have something that you're doing, the work you're doing in your life needs to, if you have any passion around, it needs to have a strong why. And so my why became bigger than helping people lose weight and helping people feel like 20 years younger. Uh, my why was that for a long time as a Beachbody coach. I, I call it my limited why because I didn't, I wasn't able to think bigger. I was, I didn't, dr I never dreamed bigger. I, I was, okay, you know, it, and I've talked about this before, my logical brain, I got in, I just, you know, kind of fell into the Beachbody business just through coincidence and opportunity. You know, my daughter, like I said, in episode 31, she was a speech body coach. She introduced it to me and I was like resistant at first. And I was like, finally, okay, okay. And I did. And then I felt good. And then I was like, it was like a process, a journey, right? We all go through, evolved into this, like, oh my gosh, I love it. I mean, I feel so good and I want to help other people. Well, my why was helping people feel like I felt, but it evolved into, I want people to have the job of their dreams. I want people, I want to help people find why they're here on earth. And in my Beachbody world, it could only be as a Beachbody coach. I couldn't help people do anything but be a Beachbody coach. And being a Beachbody coach is not for everybody. And why should, when I realize that it's their terms, their rules, and a lot of their money, you know, not my money, not my rules, and I started realizing that, I didn't want that for other people. I was like, well, if I bring them in as a Beachbody coach, then they're limited, just like I'm limited. And I don't want that. I want people to figure out what sparks them what lights them up inside let's get that like let's get that ignited and let's figure out what your business can be what your rules can be so you can get all the money for yourself and you can decide what to do with the money you can decide who to hire you can decide how much to pay them and to reward them when your business does well and you can donate to whoever you want to you know, we would have these things, fundraisers for Beachbody, and it was always a good cause, but, you know, maybe it's something I didn't want to donate to, but, you know, it's a part of that cause because I was a Beachbody coach. So those are my three big reasons why I decided and had the kahunas to branch out on my own. And it was really just a realization of it was a limiting opportunity, and I wanted a sky is the limit opportunity. And the only way I was going to get that was to create it myself. And, and then once I, I, once I listened to my heart and stopped listening to the logic brain that I, oh, or the limiting beliefs that you, you, you don't have what it takes, or you don't have a college degree, because that was always been a limiting belief of mine. So once I got past all that, and I was focused on who I could help and what it could be and what I could do. There was no question about what, what I was going to do and what choice. It was just a matter of, okay, what's the next step? What do I need to do? I need to hire a coach. I need to learn. I need to take a course. I need to learn. I just need to 
get my master's online degree in how to start my own online business. And so, uh, and a lot of it I had because I had a training wheels business, right? So I kind of was already operating in the online space as a business owner, um, but it was just with a network marketing company, not on my own. And so that is the, the main, well, those are the three main reasons why I transitioned into my own business. And just to recap, it was, I wanted my terms, my conditions, my rules. I didn't want to have to go to a policies and procedures handbook to, to find out what I could and could not do as a business owner. I wanted my money. I wanted my efforts. I wanted to be rewarded financially 100% for my efforts. Put it that way. It's the best way to put it. And my why grew. My why no longer fit into the world of the, on, the, the network marketing business I was in. And so, I, you know, and, and it, honestly, if I had dug deeper, my why probably would have been what it evolved to, but I didn't allow myself. I just went with the flow. It was like always just doing what kind of like fell into my lap and not really taking a step back and getting quiet and getting in touch with my internal self. Uh, because we we know inside, we know we just are too busy and we're too doing the thing that we think is the right thing to do, and we don't take the time. We live in a busy, busy world with so much uh, noise. And and once I started to really, you know, it, a lot of the stuff that I, you know, I said take the next step. I I remember really digging into personal development, buying books that would help me. And so much of what I was learning was take time, journal, get quiet, meditate, do, 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 and do all that. Because once you start to do that, your why will expand and you'll really, you'll uncover those layers that, um, that really ultimately lead you to what you're meant to do and what that true purpose is inside of you. So it took me a while for sure. So, but you know, if I can do it at, Finally, I was at 59, almost turning 60, uh, then there's hope for everyone, right? And I know, I love the story of Grandma Moses because she, although she kind of felt, it wasn't like she did her like personal development. I don't think she did and uh, back in the day, but um, she did not start painting until she was 76. And so I always think of her story because I think when I think, oh, I'm so old, I'm like 61 now and, you know, there's not a lot of time left, you know, we, we really don't know what, we, you know. A 20 year old could have one day left and a 60 year old could have 40 years left, which is more than time than I worked in the corporate world, which is crazy. So we can't think about time, really. We have to erase that from our mind. But I always think about Grandma Moses, because if you want something real to latch on to, hey, she's, she's, it would be 15 years before I started my painting. And then she was like, she didn't start painting until she was 70, 76. And she was, she's world famous. She painted for 25 years and it probably extended her life. So, so never, never let age stop you from doing anything and uh, hope this, this episode has helped you in some way. And ultimately uh, I would love for everybody to find their true purpose and get to work on it. All right. Adios. Thank you so much for tuning into the Not Your Average Lives podcast. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe on iTunes if you have an Apple device. You can find free resources and learn what else I have going on at the moment that might interest you on my website at notyouraveragegrandma.com. You can also find me on Instagram or Facebook at Not Your Average Grandma. If you liked this episode, it would make my heart so happy if you could leave me a five-star rating. You can also add a review to let me know what you like about this podcast, which will help spread the word about it to others who need a little midlife inspiration. As always, be you, listen to your inner voice, and focus on reigniting that lost spark so you can start living your own, not your average life. Thank you.